Making Millions about, is about seeing opportunities. It's about knowing who's who in Hollywood, who's who outside of Hollywood, and who knows what to do in a legal situation. There's all sorts of people in this land who feel that the law is not theirs to follow. I don't like that attitude because rules, boundaries, justices of the peace, if you will, help us to produce a loving land. In life, we need politicians who talk about love, liberty, and life. Love, life, and liberty, or liberty, love, and life, or liberty, life, and love, if I can keep up with the changing things around. You see, to different people, those words mean different things, but they really encompass the human life of daily living. You see, it's daily life that politicians need to protect. The daily life of having a private life if we want one, a public life if we need one, or practically a little of both if we should do it that way. In life, there are Hollywood famous people who have their public life of promoting their films and their plays and their musicals and their Broadway hit shows, but then they have a private life which is totally known to them and only the most intimate people of their life. The house of the Lord is like that. It has many rooms, and in life, we can compartmentalize things and situations. We can take things back in time and talk things over and just revisit history, but then we can produce a new way of life. We can produce a new love for someone. We can produce a new way of interacting with them, but we have to mature in our own souls. We have to learn how to handle those people, and we have to recognize that we're not speaking a love language that means one thing to them if we're ruining their life by tainting their food, taking their property, or destroying their rights in the land. Human Rights, International Declaration of Human Rights, that was put together by the United Nations, the 400 some countries that did that underneath Roosevelt's tutelage, really literally is the main laws of life. The next area of life for the rest of us in terms of our liberties are the federal laws, the US constitutional laws, and anything that protects our personhood, our paperwork, and our property. I talk about this regularly. I literally push this onto the politicians because I get so tired of what they talk about. Not exactly, but because what they're talking about doesn't speak to all people. But when we talk about daily life, the daily aspects of the hours of how we invest our time and our resource of time and our resources of funds in people and in companies and in service providers, that impacts everyone. You see, when we rise, we literally take a shower, which means we're paying a bill to the water companies. So the protection of our waters and the cleanliness of it is of utmost importance to most families across the land. Water also is utilized to produce our food and the environment. So the protection of our environment needs to happen more readily with the enforcement of lots of county mounties, like I like to call them from Canada, and we need to produce those rangers, much more of them in our communities and in the lands and even in the farmlands, which are owned by people. They need to allow the rangers access. They need to wear a certain color uniform that only rangers can buy. No other person should be allowed to buy them from some utility store. It has to be clear who the real police are and who the fake ones are, and that's what's important. We also have to have investigators of all different types and sizes, shapes, forms, and abilities, but most of them don't always pass because they don't lie very well, and that's the truth. We have to be able to figure out how to produce a life without a lie. Now, when we talk about lying, we can talk about a lot of things, but most people lie to a point to protect themselves, but I'm getting off track with my political rhetoric. What I'm trying to say is that in life, we have to produce interesting people in the political realm who understand that daily life starts with that first morning shower, that first cup of coffee, that first breakfast, that first egg, that first piece of ham, that first bowl of cereal, that first drink of milk, that first everything begins our day. Then we literally go off to an employment situation where we hope our souls are soaring, our skills are growing, and our life legacy is literally flourishing. When I say these things, it makes sense, I think, to most people. We then go out to lunch, usually with colleagues or with potential clients or with consumers of our products and services. We listen to them. We hear what we need to hear in order to produce lifelong customers, whether they're internal clients with that we're working with in interdepartmental relationships or whether they're external clients and consumers 
of our products or services that pay for our lives, that produce the income, the overall revenue streams for our companies, our corporations, our businesses, our industries, our manufacturing groups, our farmland. Now, having said that, we then go to the reality of coming home at the end of the day. When we come home, we usually get out of our business attire. We put on casual clothing, which means our textile industries maybe do need to be reviewed. We need to make sure we're not buying crap and selling crap. And openly, our watches and things that we utilize to, to protect our time management opportunities in life need to be of quality. We have too many watches that literally die after a short period of time. I bought a lovely pocket watch that broke within three or four days of its arrival. It just didn't keep time. Now, it was a wind-up, but it shouldn't have to be wound every two days in order for it to work. There's other technologies that work better. They can utilize that. I would have paid a little bit more money to know it was going to last instead of what I paid for the design that I was looking for. We need to have manufacturers that can manufacture on the spot that literally we can send a design to and they can just produce it and imprint it like that. Now, what I'm also talking about is our free time management. Our free time can be utilized for a lot of things. It can be utilized for a secondary income source and stream for our family, whether that's in network marketing and quality businesses that are produced through that field of direct selling, which everybody does. Every human being is involved in the direct selling market. Now, how is that true? Because we're always promoting something or someone. We're either promoting someone to get more opportunities in life, or we're promoting a service, an industry, a food vendor, a restaurant, a movie. We're just talking it up. We're saying, did you hear about this? Have you gone to that? Have you seen this? That's direct selling. The only difference is whether or not we're getting paid for that promotion, that word of mouth marketing, that relationship marketing that we're doing. Now, outside of that, we have other things we're trying to accomplish in life. We have goals of saving money and making our money grow. So we need to know the bankers and the personal bankers of our bank. We need to know they've not only been to a banking school of some time, that type that they understand the laws governing banking, but they're not violating our rights, giving away our private information indiscriminately to people who just want to voyeur in our life. That they're not illegally giving out our information or our bank accounts. They're not illegally allowing someone to access our funds. At the same time, we need to know that they know how to grow funds and help us make sound decisions when we're not sure what to do or how to buy a house or get a mortgage or buy off a loan or to purchase a car. I remember going to a man who I got a ba good banking deal from, who I showed some information about a car. He helped me look it up, but I swear to God, the guy must have gone in and bought the car right out from underneath me. He was the only person I had told about that car. That auto dealer told me that I could come back as soon as the car was repaired and make an offer. She didn't want me to make an offer then. When I got back there, it had been sold out right from underneath me, right off the repair shop lot. That was unfair. She told me it would have been there, it was going to be there when I got back that following day, that following Monday after the weekend of repairs. But openly, we have to have trustworthy people in our banks who will teach us exactly what's going on in our bank accounts where there's been an error and fix things when the overdrafts get out of control. We also need to have banks that aren't stealing from our paychecks. And what I mean by that is that they're literally saying, okay, this bank wrote this check for your company, but you don't have an account here, so we're going to take 3% of your earnings just to cash the check. That's highway robbery, I feel. Do they not produce enough income from their other charges on our accounts to pay for that service? Or have they somehow provided some executive a higher salary? I don't know how that works. I think we need to look into that industry a little bit more. In the olden days, I'm not sure how the bankers got paid, but openly somehow they got paid without all this theft of our hard-earned dollars. Some of it I understand. It's like credit cards. You can either get a PayPal credit card or bank card, or if you will, that only charges a 3% for the purchases, or you can get a real credit card machine, and I hate to call it real, that charges a 13 to 15% to utilize. Obviously, for the small business owner, the other side is a better deal. I've never had any problems with my PayPal card until the last year of my life. Someone monkeyed around with it, connected to a bank account that I didn't connect it to, and thought they'd just screw me over in some way. That was intellectual property theft in one regard, but it was financial theft in another because I didn't connect my account to that bank account. Someone else illegally immorally, illicitly did. 
and proving it is the hard part. Now, one of the challenges we have with online shopping is that there isn't always a customer service representative right there on the premises of that business. It could be a mom and pop shop we're buying from. It could be a conglomerate we're buying from. That is something that we have to look at. Customer service people really need to be located at the location of that business so they can follow up on our purchases. We're still talking about the uses of free time and discretionary income here. What I'm also talking about is our movie theaters and other aspects and other places like restaurants where we invest our hard-earned dollars. Those employees need to be regarded, but they also need to be trained in the laws of the land about safety of food handling, sanitation, and about what can happen to them if they illegally, immorally taint someone's food, regardless of how they're feeling in life. Now, when I'm talking about these things, I'm talking about daily life of a human being in this land. There's all sorts of other services, music lessons, language lessons, uh, health clubs, etc., that we put our money in pretty normally in certain communities. Every community sort of has a common denominator of a lifestyle. Of course, every human being is different. Every human being has a different hobby, but we have to look at those things, and particularly in our secondhand marketplace. There are certain companies that are robbing us of the values of our property when they give us next to nothing to take it off our hands. It's really not fair. It needs to be regulated a little bit more, and we need to be able to get a little bit more out of what we're selling. They shouldn't be able to make 600, 700% off of something that we've gifted to them. 200% markup is reasonable enough. Goodwill is a little bit different. They're making 400% sometimes or more because they're getting it all for free. People are literally getting away their junk, but it's a treasure to someone else. It's that trash to treasure, trash to treasures concept, but it helps to close our nation. It helps to close foreign countries too when they send that stuff overseas. Now, outside of that, we have medical care that we have to sometimes have if we're ill and dental hygiene is sort of, certainly an important thing but we have to have physicians who are required to produce a price list so that we know if we're going to go to the doctor, when we call and say, this is what's going on for me, what is likely to be the charge, we know what it's going to be. So therefore, if we're paying cash out of pocket, we know how much to bring or how much we're gonna be billed for on net 30 days. The same at the dental uh, place. Yes, there's insurance that can cover those things, but we have to be in better connection, better collusion, if you will, with our insurance providers. We also have to have pharmacists that don't violate our, our, our rights by calling in on prescriptions to insurance companies that aren't actually paid by insurance. When a patient has said multiple times, when a client of a pharmacy has said multiple times, this is not paid for by insurance, stop trying to process it that way. Now I'm talking about daily life that every human being goes through. Then we have our pets' lives to look after. We have those places of where we buy our animals, they need to be a little bit more regulated to a point where we know where the good houses are to get animals for fair prices. There needs to be better technology to help us find those animals. And openly, that's the small business market. Now, outside of that, we've got other things and other aspects of life that we need to have the right to do and enjoy and be a part of. Some of the more intimate natured oriented shops need to be able to allow us to do that, and usually they do. It's hard for them to keep workers, for sure, because of the seedy way in that which some people walk into those places. I'm also talking about other aspects of life that are a part of our general daily life, our private life. You see, politicians need to protect our private life a great deal more than they do. They need to protect our rights and our homes to not be voyeured in on by any person anywhere, period. That's a part of our educational system. We need our educational systems from the earliest of ages to be teaching constitutional law, to be requiring it to be memorized by any child of the land, so that no matter what industry they go into, they know the laws that generally regulate those industries. They know it by heart by the time they graduate high school. This produces an ethical society. This produces a moralistic way of life. We also need people to be looking out for what's being produced in rhetoric out of pastoral pulpits. If a pastor is spewing hate, maybe he doesn't need to be a pastor anymore. We don't need promoters of hate and political agendas in the pulpit. There's a separation of church and state that we need to continue to regard. 
I remember attending a mega church and being utterly offended that that pastor thought he was going to promote one political person over another. That was an abuse of power, and I told him so. And as a consumer of any organization with either my time, my talent, or my treasure, meaning my money, time is also as powerful as money sometimes, I have the right to provide that feedback. We need to produce a better way of cons being a consumer. We need to have people who have consumer rights as well. A consumer's right is to write to buy a large ticket item, whether it be a house, whether it be a mobile home, whether it be a camper or trailer like I'd like to have, or whether it be an automobile, or whether it be anything of large investment of money. And for some people, large is only $100. But for most people, we're talking thousands of dollars to protect their right to have a quality item that we're not being sold a lemon or something with problems that someone is trying to skirt their responsibilities on. If a house is not ready for sale, a realtor needs to be obligated to say so immediately. If a car is not really saleable, then it needs to be chopped off, sold off for parts, and not allowed back on the road. That produces better automobiles, more safety in the world, and less people getting hit on the road because their car broke down and they're walking to try and find help, which is hard to find when you have a car problem today. People are unkind to the traveler today. We need to work on that. We need to make America Beautiful campaign to be relaunched by some politician. Probably one of the leading authors who's put her hat in the ring should be talking about those things. She needs to be letting her light shine the way she normally lets it shine. She's not a political mind to my knowledge, at least not how she's known publicly, she needs to let her own light shine in that way. We need a lawyer in a place of power as well. Now, when I talk about these things, I'm talking about the daily life aspect of which a politician impacts. No politician has the right to take away someone's property and annex it into a community. That's not fair. It robs a person of their federal rights to their own property, their own possessions, anything on that land, and the value that plays in that person's legacy to their own children, their own grandchildren, their own entire lineage in their life. Now, these are the things that are most important to people. These are the things that make a country great. These are literally the things that people flock to our country to find. And these are the things that are most important to the people of the land in the day-to-day -day aspects of political life in this nation that is so great, we are envied by the world. Now. In my life, I'm looking for a lawyer who gets the law. I'm looking for a lawyer who can fight for my rights. I'm looking for a lawyer who can help me sell a film. I'm looking for a lawyer to produce a lot of things that will make profit for my family going forward. Make it a great, great day, people. Do so by understanding how politics impacts your daily life. All these industries need to be carefully looked at that help us to produce our daily life. That's where the power of politics and politicians should be focusing their time. Anything happening outside of our world is something at a much higher level than most of us care about right now. We can be concerned about its impact to our nation. We can be concerned about the impact of immigrants to our employment. We can be concerned about the impact of infidels on our food and gas and the prices we pay. But openly, gas is also something we need to look at as politicians. Are we having enough? to produce truly quality gas prices or are we being lied to at the pump? These are the things that impact a family immediately. And car sales, we gotta work on that issue. There's hundreds of cars on a lot and there's a lot of people who don't have any. Certainly there's gotta be a way to produce a better way of purchasing an automobile for any person of any age who's of driving capability and of maturity to have that right in this land. Thanks for listening. Blake Kenson, Blaze Communications, LLC, hopefully talking about the soul-keeping ways that we need to produce a life in this land that we love. Thanks for listening.